Hi everyone and thank you so much for joining me for this next video. Today we are going to turn a big piece of hickory. Now you'll notice here I've got it all marked out and we're going to put it on the bandsaw and cut that out here in just a minute. But this is project number 15 in our series that we're working on. And of course this piece of hickory has been on my shelf for just under a year. In fact I put this on the shelf on February the 20th of 22 and today is January the 23rd of 2023. So it's been there just under a year. Now let me show you this piece of wood. It still has the bark on it. And of course you can see here, um, you know, it's busting off quite a bit. You can see where as it went through the drying process, it started popping this off. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock this off, then put this on the bandsaw and cut this piece of hickory out and we'll start working on this project. now. This is pretty much going to be a brown and round, okay? I will say that. But I am going to try to do something a little different with this piece of wood uh, as we get into it. I have no idea what we're going to find in here, so it's going to be a surprise to me as much as it is to you. So with that said, stick around. We're going to jump into this piece of hickory right now. Well, I stopped here for a second because I want to show you a couple things. Um, number one, we've got some considerable punkiness in here, in this in this uh, this area here. Now, obviously, you know I don't have my tenon cut or anything like that. I just wanted to show you there's a huge pith that's right here. When we go to dry this. This is probably going to bust. That's okay. Um, and then, of course, we've got this area where the the bark was at. Now, my plan is, is to turn this down where this is gone. So it's going to be a more narrow shaped type of bowl, bigger at the top, smaller at the bottom, obviously.
what I want to do right now is mix up some denatured alcohol and a little bit of resin and take care of these little punky areas. There's one here, there's a little bit right here, um, there's a little bit right here, and then a little bit on the tenon. So I'm going to go ahead and coat this, basically this whole area. There, there's still some you know, fine tuning in the shape, like we've got a big chunk here that needs to be fixed, and there's one here. Of course, that's in the you know that's in the punky area so we do have a little bit of fine tuning on the shape but we're getting really close i just want to take a minute to uh just real quickly to show you what i'm using i'm using the art and glow uh resin and of course this is in a, a little eight fluid ounce you know amount so i don't have to you know go to the bigger you know bottles and then of course the um, art and glow hardener and i'm mixing up about an ounce of this so a half an ounce of each and then put the denatured alcohol into a mixing pail and just use my little you know my little mixer here and just go in and just mix it up for two or three minutes and of course you can see all that foam in there that's all air bubbles which I'm not concerned about because we're really more interested in you know um, this getting down into the wood than we are you know air bubbles is not going to make any difference in the wood so at any rate um, what I'm going to do here now you can see this kind of bogs down so if you were using regular resin you wouldn't be able to use this little mixer you'd have to use you know some kind of a little stir stick or you know maybe a, a, a stronger you know mixing uh, unit so at any rate this works really good for this a lot of times I just sit here and hold it like this for about two or three minutes just make sure it's mixed up really good before we start to use it so okay so you can see we've got our resin here a little brush and when you get done with this what you want to do is just use a little bit of lacquer thinner um, it works really good to keep your you know to clean your brushes and stuff out I usually let it sit overnight and then um, you know rinse it out the next day but anyway we're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this resin right here onto this really punky area and you can see how that's just sucking that up now this is pretty thick. I didn't mix it so thin that it's just going to sit here and run. But I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put it all around this area. It kind of goes up into this up into this area too. So we're just going to coat this whole thing. Of course, we're going to do this pith that's right here. Try to keep that from busting on us when we put it into the kiln. Of course, um, I'm going to be turning this out, but not until after it comes out of the kiln. See, this is just going to be like this until we hollow it out and put it into the kiln. I'm not going to do anything else to the back of this. So we'll go ahead and do this foot, or well, the tenon. And we got another punky area right here. And another pith. Now when I'm doing this, I didn't mix up enough to do the whole bowl, which is not necessary, but just focus on the areas that we want to make sure that you know are solid and have a good coating. That way we can make our resin go a little bit longer than what we would if we did the whole bowl.
All right, so I just pulled this off of the lathe and there's some punkiness that's down in this area here, right down in this area here. So what I'm gonna do is like I did before, I'm just gonna take a little bit of thin CA glue and put on those punky areas and then we're gonna stick it into the um, kiln and let it dry for you know, three or four days and we'll check it and see. The moisture on this was only about 19%, so we're really close to being where we need to be as far as um, you know, being able to finish turn this. And of course, this is gonna be probably half this thick. Um, I like to leave a little bit of thickness there you know, just to give us some room to play with later on. We've got a couple little places that are tore out that need to be fixed. Um, and when I was turning this, it was like turning molasses. I mean, this resin, because of the temperature in the shop, was not completely cured. So it was coming out and hitting me, you know, on my arms, and it just felt like, like I was turning syrup. So, um, yeah, so we're going to have to let that dry. And I went ahead, and on this back side back here, uh, on this part here, I went ahead and put a little bit of black CA uh, in that and then sprayed it. There still needs to be some more put in it, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this done, get it into the kiln, stick around. We'll jump back into this here very shortly. All right, so I just pulled this uh, hickory bowl out of the kiln. And of course you can see where I did some, you know, some glue up and so on. And someone made a suggestion to me uh, that's a, actually a subscriber here on the channel about using some um, sanding sealer before you put the CA glue on to um, to keep it from you know obviously staining the wood now in this particular scenario it doesn't matter um, and I have not tried it yet so that's something new to me I mean I have never tried that to see you know if that would take care of the problem so um, in a situation where you're using the glue in a piece that's getting ready to be sanded or um, you know finished, I, I can definitely see where that would come in really handy. But since we're going to cut this down quite a bit, um, most of this is going to be turned away anyway. So uh, at any rate, it's a great idea, and I'm definitely going to try it. So what I'm going to do right now is basically just get this thing, um, yeah, shaped because it just came out of the kiln. So Stick around and we're gonna keep working on this piece and get it finished. All right, you'll notice right here, and I'll zoom in here just for a second so you can kind of see what I'm doing, but you can kind of see it right there. But what I did is there, there I took a little bit of medium CA glue, but before I put the CA glue on there, I took a little sanding sealer and put across that, and just to try it and make sure that it's gonna work. I mean, I, somebody suggested it, so I thought I'd try it. and use the medium CA glue across this little groove here that kept on kind of wanting not to flatten out. In other words, it was kind of a soft spot. So I put the CA glue on there. I've been letting it sit for a second and I'm gonna take a little activator and just kind of hit it a little bit and let it harden up. And then I'll let that sit for a few minutes and then come back and just lightly, you know, knock off this ridge and hopefully that's gonna take care of the problem I was having and, um, and get this nice and flat.
Okay, so we've got a couple little places in this that are just soft wood that, you know, I have tried to, you know, get it really smooth. But what it is, is it's like a, a wormhole that hasn't come all the way through and there's some really soft wood in there. So you can see here where I've actually went in and, and tried to, you know, to fill uh, some of it with some brown CA. And I'm not going to try to fill any more of it. And of course, as I said, I'm not going to fill, you know, this void that's here. Uh, I'm just going to leave it natural. So we're going to go ahead and put some sanding sealer on this. And I'm using Mylan's sanding sealer. Um, let me just lay this down here so we don't get it all over the lathe. But yeah, it's it's uh yeah it's a really you know it's a brown and round bowl, but it is hickory, and it's got some really beautiful you know grain going on in it. And so what I'm really relying on here is just the the beauty of the wood to you know to be able to to come through and show. Um, all of that really pretty grain that's in this wood. Now the shape of it's a little different than what I've done before, which I like. Um, I've got some ideas for some other bowls that are in similar shape, but a little bit different treatment to them. But of course, we'll get to that kind of stuff later. Go ahead and do the outside of this. Now, once I get this on here, I'll let this dry down, and and then come back and do you know basically a light sanding with some steel wool, just to kind of knock off you know any wood that might have um, you know stood up because of the you know the the sanding sealer. You know, a lot of times when we put finishes on something the wood will react to it and kind of raise the grain a little bit. Now, I just like to go back with a little bit of, of um, steel wool after the fact and add, you know, a little sanding to it just to smooth it out and get it ready for finish. Now, some people, I've heard, you know, some people say that, you know, you can put your sanding sealer on it, buff it out and call it good. Don't do anything else to it. And I can agree with that in some situations, I guess. But I think it really depends on what kind of look you want on this, you know, on your piece. So we're going to let this dry down, and then we'll come back to it. I think it's beautiful. I think it's got some really pretty character to it. So stick around, and we'll keep working on this ball. Well, you can see we've got, you know, a nice little kind of a punch, a shine on this. And we're going to pretty much leave it about this uh, tonality as far as shine is concerned. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the DEFT DEFT clear wood finish, the satin, which I really like. It just gives a very nice natural look to it. In fact, I need to put a little bit of paper underneath this. I just don't want this to get all over my ways. We're going to put our first coat on and then we'll come back and we will, um, you know, buff this after it dries and put our second coat on and just put a light you know when I do this I just put a light coat on for the first coat and just kind of build it up over three um, different coats and it just gives a really nice finish to it that looks good all right so we'll let this dry down we'll come back and we'll um, buff this out and then we'll take a look at our finished piece stick around Okay, so we got this hickory bowl completely turned, and I really like it. Um, of course, it's brown and round. It's not anything special. It doesn't have, you know, carving or burning or etching or anything like that in it. But sometimes all we need to do is just let the beauty of the wood come through in the piece. And I do like the shape of this bowl. Um, I have not done one in this particular type of shape before. And, uh, and I may end up doing some others, you know, in this shape. But let me bring it up and just kind of do a little rotation here and just show you, you know, the grain in this. And, of course, this was the knot that we had that goes all the way through that I did not, you know, fix, which was fine. 
Um, of course, this is the interior of it. The finish is nice. I like a satin finish. And of course, we were able to, you know, put our uh, coin down here in the bottom. And the bottom is just finished flat. I don't have a foot on this. Um, I am using a new tool uh, that I just recently started turning. You can see it right here over my shoulder. And I'll go into that later. You may already be using one of those, um, but it works really well for flattening off this bottom. And uh, yeah, we'll do a review of that and uh, we'll talk about it. But at any rate, this came out really nice. I'm very happy. I wanna say one thing about hickory. Hickory is a very hard wood, but when it's punky, and, and has some rotten places in it, it gets really spalty and you know soft. And so you've got a combination of this soft wood and this hard wood that's gonna chip out on you really easily. So just keep that in, uh, in mind and just make sure your tools are very, very sharp when you're shoot, you know, turning something like this. Um, yeah, this is a really hard wood. So uh, it's a lot of fun to turn, but it takes a little bit of time and effort to get it you know, right and get it sanded and make it smooth and look good. So, hey, go down to the comments, give me some feedback. I'd really appreciate your feedback on this particular project. If you're new to the channel and you haven't been here, please consider subscribing. We're gonna have a lot of fun here in the shop and I'd love for you to be here with us as we go forward. So with that said, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.